oil is the single largest energy resource that's used in the world. Fully one-third of the world's energy comes from using oil. So everyone would love to find it, to strike it rich, to hit the black gold, the Texas tea. So how do you know if you have oil under your ground? Well first, let's keep in mind how it's formed. Oil is formed by dead plants and animals falling into a marine, i.e. saltwater, environment. But that's not saltwater environments of today. These are saltwater environments that were 100 million years ago, or thereabouts. So you can look in geology and try to figure out where there were seas. And there's a lot of places across the world. The second thing, though, is it has to become trapped. Oil and natural gas are formed the same way, both of them in marine environments. Gas is the shortest hydrocarbons, natural gas, and of course if they aren't trapped after they're formed, they'll simply ooze out of the ground. Liquids are also mobile, maybe not as mobile as gases, but if you have liquids at a certain depth, they can clearly move, mostly downhill, but they can also eventually diffuse and evaporate as well. So if you want to find oil, liquid hydrocarbons, under the ground, you're going to need to have some type of trap. So what could a trap look like? Well first, oil is going to be in some type of porous medium. Limestone is a very typical one. Sand is another. Something which was in a shallow open ocean area and plant and dirt and sediment, sedimentary layers, sediment continues to collect and press down and become deeper and become some type of sedimentary rock. A porous sedimentary rock. Great. You can look around for finding places that have porous sedimentary rock but it has to also be trapped so those hydrocarbons that were formed in it can't escape. One typical type of trap is a fault trap. Imagine I have a layer of bedrock, then the sedimentary rock, and then a capstone. Well, this is fine, but again, if there's no place where the material in the sedimentary rock can collect, it will ooze out. Now imagine that we have this formation and you have an earthquake, a geological shifting event, a movement of two tectonic plates or just a, a fault zone that is created and it shifts this area up with respect to that area. Now I have this sedimentary layer which may contain oil and gas and the end of it, the upwardmost end, is trapped by a layer now of bedrock or if there was a shift down, maybe of capstone. Certainly something that's not porous. This makes a geological trap. And where in this trap would the materials be? Well, gravity works, especially after 100 million years of settling. The uppermost part of the trap will be filled with natural gas, because gases are lighter. Oil floats on water, so the oil will be in the next layer, and then finally, since this was in a marine sedimentary environment, the rest of the porous rock will be filled with salt water. Locating these traps allows people to find where oil may be. Every geological trap of a sedimentary layer does not necessarily contain oil. So you're going along and you say, hey, I bet there used to be an inland sea here or some coast. We've found fossils, we've found limestone with fossils in it. This could be a spot. How do you know where to drill? Well, one day, long ago, in the late 1980s, I was driving home. And I saw the most unusual truck I had ever seen out in the country roads in the southern part of Champaign County, where we live. And of course, being a young engineering professor, I'm thinking, wow, this is a weird looking truck and it's got wires sticking out of it. I'm gonna stop, ask these guys, hey, what's up? 
because there aren't very many cars on these country roads and it's taking up most of the road anyway. So I pull up alongside, I roll down my window, I say, hey guys, what you doing? Surveying. What you surveying for? Can't tell you. Ah. Mind if I uh, look at all your cool stuff? Nah, sure. I start talking engineering stuff as awesome oscilloscopes, right? And, and these wires are out there, and they said, okay, here, here, a pulse is coming up. I said, a pulse? And then the whole bottom of this truck goes boom down on the ground. And, and it's a thumper truck, at least that's what I called it. One big giant thump of uh, thumper's tail here hits the ground, and those wires were going out to little seismographs. And then all this data comes back, and they have all these waves, and they store it, right? Um, so think about this. The big giant bottom of the truck, this big foot, hits the ground and makes a shock wave. And that wave penetrates, and when the density of the rock changes, when you hit a layer where you go from one density of rock to another, you'll get a reflection. And the seismometers that are around pick up that echo. It's like sonar. Because they know the density of the rock by the speed of the wave, you can figure out where this division between the two types of rock are. Well, that's the first step, right? Maybe the rock below that is this porous sedimentary rock. The sound wave, of course, keeps going. Part of it reflects, part of it's transmitted. Hits another layer, reflects again. They can look at that, they can look at the speed of the wave, and you can get a whole map of the subsurface areas in this particular region. And of course, if you see, hey, look, dense rock, porous rock, dense rock, so far deep, this area looks like there's some type of a trap here, a, an area where it maybe rises up. That's where we're going to drill. So, wouldn't tell me what oil company, that's fine. I knew that they had to be prospecting to find this area to see if there's this porous rock maybe containing oil. A few months later, a guy comes and knocks on the door, wearing a suit. Sometime in the evening, right, out in the countryside, shiny car, doesn't have like ExxonMobil on the side, but, I, but he introduces himself. He says, you know, I work for ExxonMobil and maybe it was just Exxon back then, and I'd like to talk to you about um, your mineral rights. Of course, dollar signs immediately go in my eyes. Oh my God, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I'm gonna have an oil well. <clears throat> Must have found something. I had done a little bit of research, and the guy said, yes, indeed, you know, if we find oil, and if we, if we extract oil from your property, you'll get the standard royalty, which is one-eighth, 12.5%. And for not doing any work at all? Sounds pretty good. But he said, but of course, before we can do, you know, exploration or drill test wells, and, and there's no saying at all that we're even going to drill a well on your property, right? It could be nearby. There might not even be oil in this area. But just because there might be, of course, I know they already have the seismology data, right? Just because there might be, we will pay you for your lease, to lease your mineral rights. Say, well, okay. Um, how much? He said, two dollars. Two dollars. Two dollars an acre. Two dollars an acre. An acre is one of these again strange British units of measure. Um, there's 640 acres in a square mile. A hectare, which is a real logical metric unit, that's 100 meters by 100 meters. That's two and a half acres. I had at that point, probably around 25 acres, right? 10 hectares of land. Multiplying 25 by 2, that's $50. And I say, oh, well, okay, so that's, that's $2 per acre. Is that per month, per day, per year? He said, no, no, that's forever. So let's look at this straight. For $50, you will have the mineral rights under this land forever. Is that right? He said, yes, but, but remember, don't worry. If we do find oil here, you still get the one-eighth. 
course, in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, if you find oil next door, I build an oil well and I get eight eighths. Of course, building an oil well is pretty uh, uh, difficult, expensive stuff, I'm sure. And we have no idea if there's really oil there or not. I'm also worried that what if they build the oil well next door and it sucks all the oil out from under my property, right? So I figure I better learn some more stuff. And certainly I'm not going to give people the right to drive giant roads and, and oil derricks and all this stuff in the middle of my small little plot of land, right, of trees and forest and fields with the kids playing in for 50 bucks forever, right? So I continue to watch this development. Clearly they do buy up some leases. And I see an oil derrick go up. Ha! Ah, fascinating. How do you go about drilling for oil? 